it has happened again my people everywhere is scattered that simon ekpar sent a shocking message to tinubu a few hours ago from finland my people everywhere buzzed in this chaos moment the message got to tinubu because no one could believe that such a message could come from a man locked up in jail in finland this content calls for urgency and quick reaction in this video i will show you the exact message simon ekpar sent to tinubu i will also show you how he sent it the platform he used and how the message got leaked it's now the talk of the town and my people can't stop discussing about it stay connected like this video give it a thumb up comment share it across all social media platforms, and don't forget to click on the notification icons so youtube can easily recommend it to others i'll be back shortly <laughs> It's happening in the street again! The center of political news, celebrity gossip, religious gossip, and happiness in the society. Join us, the voice of Africa. Welcome back, my people. It has happened again. The eastern part of Nigeria, where the origin of Biafra is located, has been buzzing with roaring anger from the southeastern region of the country. This anger has been building up for a while now, especially since the former arrest of the IPOP leader, Mnandi Kano, Every Nigerian, particularly in part of the country, knows that since Kano's distension, Simon Ekpa has taken over as the de facto leader of the IPOB movement. My people, as you all know, recent events have taken a shocking turn. Simon Ekpa was recently arrested in Finland, accused of sending messages alleged to incite terrorism in Nigeria. This arrest was no small feat as the Nigerian government collaborated with the Finnish authorities to ensure it was successful. The news of his arrest sent shockwaves across Nigeria particularly in the East, where his followers are highly devoted. But that's not all. Just a few hours ago, the story took another dramatic twist. Everywhere is Qatar, after it was revealed that Simon Ekpa, despite being in detention, managed to send out a message. This message has caused an uproar and sparked heated reactions across social and political circles. In this message, Simon Ekpa boldly declared that it's going nowhere and that IBOP is here to stay. My people, this declaration has further ignited debate and tension as followers and supporters are standing firm in their belief that no matter what the Nigerian government does, the dream of a Biafra nation will not die. The reaction to this message are pouring in from all sides with some people hailing Simon Ekpa's resilience while others criticize a continuous aggression for Biafra as a threat to national unity. It's a boiling pot of emotions and opinions and the situation on the ground is becoming intense by the hour. This is just the tip of iceberg, my people. In this video, I will reveal everything about the message Simon Ekpa sent to Tinubu, how he sent it and how it leaked to the public. There's no much to unpack here. I guarantee you don't want to miss any of it. Watch the video to get the full gist and make sure you watch it the very hand because in between i will be addressing all your questions concerning about this unfolding drama don't forget to like this video give it a thumb up comment and share it across all social media platform also hit the notification bell so youtube can recommend this video to more viewers my people this story is getting hotter and i'll be back shortly with more updates uh, simon Ekpa was more of a megalomaniac if you ask me in my own opinion the uh, the fact about Simon Ekpa was he was a creation also of the Nigerian government, if you ask me, in my own personal opinion. Because after Namdi Kanu was brought back from Kenya and he was incarcerated, that gave rise to Simon Ekpa. And uh, Simon Ekpa would never have a reason if uh, Namdi Kanu had not been kept for this long. He doesn't cut across to us or me particularly, as one who, who thinks about self-determination. He's more of a, a, a man that believes in violence, took advantage of the situation uh, he found himself because uh, Namdi Kano had been incarcerated. And for some reason, he was able to get sit at home on Mondays just because people were calling for the release of Namdi Kano. And that's why for some of us, we thought releasing Namdi Kanu would have caught the powers of the likes of Simon Ekpa, who will sit in Finland, very far away from home, giving instructions. Uh, those instructions are being adhered to. People were actually being killed on his instructions. And you know, the funny thing about it was that conventions were actually also held in Finland. He has his followership, no doubt, because he's been able to build a cult around himself. If you notice on social media, there's this lady called Ngozi who, call, who styles herself as, as his chief of staff, who has called on them to continue with the agitation for the independence of uh, 
uh, Biafra on the 2nd of December and gives this false impression that even with the arrest of Simon Ekwa, they can go on in declaring a Biafran Republic on the 2nd of December. I think intelligence, that is a, uh, the NIA, has not done well in this sense because though we don't have an, a, an ambassador in Finland, there should have been an interface, sort of, before now. And even now that he's been arrested, I heard the chief of defense staff saying that he, he will be extradited to Nigeria. There is no extradition treaty between Nigeria and Finland. So what I expect Nigeria to do at this point is to make sure not they shouldn't be monitoring his trial. They should have representation from the office of the attorney general, actually go to Finland and make representation in monitoring, in not monitoring the trial, but being in the actual process of trial. Hey, well, let, let me come to you, uh, Mahmoud Jege, because I'm told that our comms are well established now, and uh, it's good to see you again. Um, I mean, like Simon Epper's growing influence was, was such that he had started imposing a sit-at-home order um, from Finland on the southeast and, and threatening to use violence and intimidation to prevent the 2023 presidential election from taking place in the southeast and this forced the Nigerian security agencies to massively deploy in force um, in the southeast and that's how they managed to diffuse that situation but with his arrest we're not really sure how his foot soldiers will react are we can the southeast throw off the shackles that he and his supporters tried to force on the people or is it likely to continue in your assessment Mahmoud Jäger. Oh, I see. Well, uh, <laughs> certainly it is a very interesting uh, development because uh, Nigeria as a whole, and uh, particularly the southeast region, has suffered uh, for many years through the inciting activities of uh, people allegedly campaigning for the actualization of uh, the sovereign state of Biafra, as they call it. And uh, this man, Simon Epa, is so far away in Finland, and he capitalized on the detention and trial of uh, Namdi Kanu, the IPOP leader, and has been saying all kinds of things grounding uh, this, this sit-at-home order. It's a very terrible thing that happens to a region like the Southeast, where commerce is the main uh, activity uh, of life. So whether he gets extradited or not, he had tested to the limit the liberal atmosphere mm. in the Scandinavian countries because, I mean, he chose his residence very carefully. The Scandinavians are extremely liberal, but even them will not be happy to see violence being encouraged in any part of the world because if for anything, if 220 million of us in Nigeria scatter, uh, at least half will go to Europe and some will be in Finland. So they should not be very happy about that. And uh, if the Nigerian authorities really rise up and uh, make an appearance in the Finnish uh, judicial system with all the evidence to show the havoc that his posts on social media have been creating in Nigeria, then they could uh, very well get him convicted and incarcerated and at best uh, silenced. Now what you cannot prevent is another person uh, trying to step mm, into mm. the void and do the same thing, but we cross that bridge when we get to it. Well, that's actually a very good point because I, I think um, Kenny also raised this issue mm. and that is that you could argue that uh, Namdi Kanu's continued detention has meant that IPOB no longer operates as a coherent force without, I mean, with a clear command structure and a clear political program. And that is what has helped to throw up um, more extreme factions led by the likes of Simon Etba. I wonder what your thoughts are, Chima Christian. Well, this conversation precedes Simon and Nam Dekado. Um, you will recall that there was an operator called um, the man from Uma here uh, of Masob. Mm. Um, I, I, Ralph That's Uwazari. a movement for the actualization of Biafra. Yes, yeah, so this conversation started pre-1957, all right, or, uh, and then moved into the war, and then shortly after the war, and then it has continued to happen. So what we're seeing is the metamorphosis of that same grievance, of that same pain, 
Although you would say that the manner in which the um, die call him a charlatan has continued to pursue this issue um, it is not that which is um, um, in support of what he said his stated objective is so i suspect that in the absence of um, in the continued detention of nam Bekano and then with what has happened to simon eba that new operators are already on the scene it's just that some of them are only known to a handful of their supporters but then with the absence of this door now you begin to see new voices and what i've seen now is that if you take out one you create two in the process and then what has happened over the years is that well that's the point mahmoud jega was making man. yeah exactly exactly yeah. because there are more in the making so although you would say that their approach is noisome but there is utility in the Nigerian government sitting back to understand the grievances of the region and finding an intelligent way to solve it, despite the fact that the way uh, these uh, do have gone about it may mm -hmm. not be uh, in the best of ways. But despite those, you can still find some utility in addressing those bottom line factors. That's a good point. So let me come to you, um, Kenny Okulubo in Lagos. Do you think that with or without Mr. Epper in the picture, the wounds that he talked about will continue to fester in the southeast oh yes uh it's it's first of all it, it will definitely be affected because he has been the head of the sit at home mantra and all because namdekano had been incarcerated but why i did why i did call out the nigerian intelligence agency is that they've not been able to infiltrate the so-called movement that uh, Simon Ekber has been able to build. If you had watched what happened in Finland a couple of months ago, you will see that people came in from Japan, people came in from America, people came in from the UK, and they were all gathered in Finland and declared him their prime minister. And these people are those who are funding the likes of the crises that are going on in the, in the Southeast, the terrorist uh, strikes that are going on in the Southeast, all in the name of self-determination. So you must be able to engage these people because it goes beyond. They are very well uh, educated people who believe in the cause of Simon Ekpa. Sorry to say, if you go on social media, if you go on Twitter, you see a lot of them there. And they are very unhappy that he's been incarcerated because over a period of time, they have not been able to be engaged. So they must do a lot to engage these people because these are Nigerians who are maybe tired of one of the, one or two things that have happened in this country and have said that look it's better we'll be in biafra it is not enough to just hold on to the fact that you want to incarcerate simon Ekpa or extradite simon Ekpa to nigeria now unam the Kanu was held for such a long time and has been held for such a long time has it stopped the crisis in, in the south it has not stopped the crisis he said if you release me i'll stop the crisis what does that mean that means that look he has to be released to engage with his people they must think of engagement at this material point in time it cannot be by force because a lot of people still do believe in simon epa as much as people like us sit down here and condemn him there are those who are very angry that he has been held back in finland and want to continue just like the, the guests in the studio have also said that you might hold him and 5 10 or 15 simon epas may, may rise Okay, thank you very much indeed for that. And um, we will obviously watch to see what is likely to happen next. But I think as you pointed out, Kenny and also Mahmoud Jega, um, w w you know, we'll just have to see whether or not extradition happens. The Nigerian defense spokesman has talked about wanting Mr. Epa to be extradited to Nigeria, but it is a Finnish investigation and Simon Epa is a citizen of Finland, so how much that complicates the possibility of his extradition to Nigeria, we will have. My people, this situation clearly reveals the deepening cracks in Nigerian political and social fabric. Simon Epa arrest in Finland and his bold defiant message have regretted the Biafra agitation, throw it back into the spotlight. The collaboration between the Nigerian and Finnish government demonstrates the extreme measures being taken to suppress movement perceived as threat to national unity. But here's the reality. The arrest has only strengthened the resolve of IPOP supporters, the defiance from Simon Ekpa and the fiery reactions from his followers show that the Biafran movement is far from backing down. This is no longer just about Simon Ekpa. It's about the people determined to fight for what they believe in, no matter the odds. The southeastern region is buzzing with anger and tension are rising fast. The Nigerian government may think this arrest will silence the movement, but the reaction tells a different story. People are asking, how long can the government ignore the cries of a region that still oppressed and overlooked? This is not just a fight for Biafra. It's a wake-up call for Nigeria. The more the issue is ignored and the explosive it becomes. Something must give my people, and the sooner the powers 
that address these grievances, the better it will be for everyone. The question now is how much longer can this tension remain without a lasting solution? Let's keep asking hard questions, my people. So therefore, my people, this is where I'll be putting a stop on this episode. And if you're watching us for the very first time, kindly like, comment, and share this video across all social media platforms. And also, don't forget to click on the notification icons so that YouTube can recommend it for us. Thank you. Stay tuned.